Jason Carter adjusted the collar of his uniform as the shuttle descended towards the alien planet of Zangser. Beside him, Dr. Simon Hayes, a linguist and cultural liaison, peered out of the window with an expression mixed with excitement and apprehension. You ready for this, Jason? Simon asked, turning his gaze from the lush landscapes of Zangser to his colleague. The planet below was swathed in colors that seemed almost surreal, a stark contrast to the utilitarian interior of their shuttle. As ready as one can be, Jason replied, offering a wry smile. I still can't believe the Zangzarians invited us to teach them about warfare. It seems ironic, doesn't it? Simon chuckled softly. Well, they are pacifists by nature. I suppose it's like hiring an expert to know exactly what you want to avoid. The shuttle shuddered slightly as it began its final descent. In the pilot's seat, Captain Laura Ingalls maneuvered the controls with practiced ease. We're almost there, gentlemen. Prepare for landing. As the shuttle touched down gently on the surface, the door hissed open, revealing a welcoming committee of Zangzarians. Their tall, slender forms were draped in flowing robes of iridescent fabric. At the forefront was Thalrex, their appointed ambassador, who stepped forward with a graceful bow. Welcome to Zangzer, esteemed teachers from Earth, Thalrex said, his voice a melodic contrast to the human's rougher tones. I am Thalrex, a sign to be your guide and student. We are eager to learn from your experiences. Jason stepped out of the shuttle, extending his hand in a typical human greeting. Thalrex mimicked the gesture, his hand cool and smooth against Jason's. Thank you, Ambassador Thalrex, Jason replied. We hope our knowledge will serve your people well. Simon joined them, his eyes flicking curiously over the assembled aliens. We've prepared a curriculum that covers the basics of strategic warfare, though it's theoretical, of course. We want to focus on the philosophy and decision-making processes rather than combat tactics. Thalrex nodded, his bright eyes reflecting a keen intelligence. Indeed, that is what interests us most. Come, let us escort you to the university where you will be teaching. Your insights will be invaluable to our scholars. The group walked towards a sleek vehicle that hovered just inches above the ground. As they settled into the comfortable seats, Jason turned to Thalrex. I'm curious, Thalrex, how do your people handle conflicts, if not through warfare? Thalrex smiled, a glint of amusement in his eyes. Through dialogue and consensus, our society is built on the principles of understanding and compromise. Perhaps, through your teachings, we can find common ground on even this alien concept of warfare. The vehicle glided smoothly towards the city, passing through landscapes that seemed both alien and beautiful. Jason felt a sense of wonder at the peaceful beauty of Zangser, but remained acutely aware of the gravity of what they were about to undertake. Simon leaned closer, lowering his voice. Do you think they're ready to grasp the darker sides of human history, Jason? Jason sighed, looking back at the fading view of their landing site. They have to be. Understanding all facets of humanity includes the good, the bad, and the ugly. We just have to present it in a way that they can understand without scaring them off. As the city's towering structures came into view, Jason felt the weight of his task settle around him. Teaching about warfare to a species that lived so harmoniously was no small challenge. Yet, as the skyline of Zangser approached, he felt a resolve firming within him. This was a new chapter, not just for him and Simon, but for all of humanity. The Zangzerian University was a marvel of architecture, blending organic curves with shimmering, translucent materials that seemed to change color with the light. As Jason and Simon walked through its corridors, they were guided by Thalrex and joined by another human delegate, Dr. Aaron Mitchell, an anthropologist keen on studying alien societies. The design of your university is fascinating, Aaron commented, looking around appreciatively. It seems to reflect your philosophy of openness and integration. Thalrex nodded. Indeed, Dr. Mitchell. We believe our surroundings should encourage a flow of ideas and energies, much like our discussions today will, I hope. They entered a large lecture hall, where rows of Zangzarian students were seated, their eyes bright with curiosity. Jason stepped up to the podium, his heart beating with a mix of nervousness and excitement. Good morning, Jason started, his voice echoing slightly in the spacious room. Today, we begin a series of lectures on a very human subject, warfare. While we come from a history marred by conflict, our goal here is to understand and learn from these experiences. The student raised his hand, and Jason nodded to him. Yes, please. Professor Carter, why is understanding warfare important for a species like ours that abhors violence? The young Zangzarian asked. That's an excellent question, Jason replied. 
Understanding different aspects of human history, including the conflicts, prepares you for better diplomacy and helps in safeguarding your society against potential threats in ways that align with your values. Simon added, it's also about understanding the psychology behind conflict, which can be applicable in many areas, not just war. Aaron chimed in from the side, and from an anthropological perspective, the study of conflict provides insights into the structure and evolution of societies, including their legal systems, social norms, and economic conditions. The discussion sparked interest among the students, leading to a lively exchange of ideas. Thaurex, observing the interaction, turned to Jason during a brief pause. It appears that your teachings stir much thought. Is this typical in human classrooms? Jason smiled. Absolutely. Education is not just about imparting knowledge, but about encouraging debate and critical thinking. As the lecture progressed, Jason introduced basic concepts of strategy and the impact of technological advancements on warfare. He carefully avoided glorifying conflict, instead emphasizing the lessons learned and the importance of strategic thinking and peaceful applications. After the lecture, the group gathered in a smaller room for a debriefing. How do you think they took it? Simon asked the group, his expression one of cautious optimism. Thaurex responded thoughtfully. Your approach is enlightening. It is one thing to read about these concepts in your earth texts, but hearing them discussed openly adds a layer of complexity we had not fully appreciated. Aaron leaned forward, his interest peaked. I noticed some students seemed particularly engaged when we discussed the role of diplomacy in resolving conflicts. Perhaps focusing on diplomacy and peace-building strategies would be beneficial. Jason nodded in agreement. It's a good angle. We can use our next sessions to delve deeper into those aspects, maybe bring in some historical case studies that ended in peace treaties rather than battles. That would indeed be in line with our principles, Thalrex confirmed, clearly pleased with the suggestion. I believe focusing on resolution rather than conflict itself could make this course particularly impactful for our students. As they left the university, the camaraderie among the human delegates and their alien host was evident. They had not only shared knowledge but had started to build bridges between their worlds, one lecture at a time. After the day's lectures at Zangzarian University, Jason and his colleagues decided to explore the local area, joined by Thaurex who was eager to show them more of Zangzarian culture. They were accompanied by Professor Linus Greer, a human sociologist, adding another layer of human perspective to the mix. As they walked through a vibrant Zangzarian market, Thaurex pointed out various stalls showcasing exotic fruits, handmade crafts, and technological gadgets unique to Zangzarian. Your market is quite different from ours back on Earth, Linus remarked, examining a device that seemed to function both as a communication tool and a nutritional scanner. Yes, our technology integrates functionality with our ethos of sustainability and harmony, Thalrex explained, demonstrating the device. We aim to ensure that even our inventions adhere to our principles of nonviolence and efficiency. Jason, intrigued by a display of intricately woven fabrics, asked, These patterns are fascinating. Do they signify anything special? Thalrex nodded, his eyes lighting up. Each pattern tells a story, much like your human folklore. These are visual narratives of our history, our dreams, and our relationships with the cosmos. The discussion turned to the similarities and differences in storytelling between their cultures. Linus, always keen on socio-cultural dynamics, engaged Thalrex in a deep conversation about the role of narrative in shaping societal values. As they continued through the market, the aroma of Zangzarian cuisine filled the air. Simon suggested they try some local dishes. Sitting at a small outdoor cafe, they were served a variety of dishes, each with its own unique blend of flavors and textures. Trying new foods together, sharing stories, it's fascinating how these simple acts can bridge such vast cultural gaps, Jason mused, tasting a particularly spicy dish. Thalrex smiled. Indeed, it is through these experiences that we truly learn about each other. Tell me, Jason, what motivated you to join this mission? Jason paused, his fork midway to his mouth. After years in military strategy, I grew tired of planning conflicts. I wanted to use my knowledge to promote understanding and peace instead. This mission seemed like a perfect opportunity. That's a commendable shift in focus, Thalrex replied, visibly impressed. Learning about human warfare to avoid it rather than prepare for it is a novel approach for us. Their meal continued with lighthearted exchanges and laughter. After the meal, they strolled to a nearby park where luminous plants cast a soft glow over winding paths. Linus, observing the interactions, commented to Jason, 
You know, this experience might make a great case study on the power of cultural exchange. Jason agreed. It's something I'd like to explore further. Maybe even write about it once we're back on Earth. As the evening drew to a close, Thalrex invited them to a Zangzarian musical performance the following night. It's another aspect of our culture that I think you'll find enlightening, he said. We'd love to attend, Simon replied enthusiastically. It's been an enlightening day, and I'm looking forward to understanding more about your people through your music. As they walked back to their accommodation under the starlit sky of Zangser, the group reflected on the day. The simple yet profound joy of shared experiences had not only brought them closer to understanding the Zangzarian way of life, but it also rekindled in them a sense of wonder and appreciation for the diversity of the universe. The evening air on Zangser was cool and crisp as Jason, Simon, Linus, and Thalrex made their way to the venue for the musical performance. The auditorium was an open-air structure designed to blend seamlessly with the surrounding nature, allowing the music to resonate with the environment. As they settled into their seats, Jason leaned over to Thalrex. I've noticed that much of your architecture and cultural practices emphasize harmony with nature. Is that a fundamental aspect of Zangzarian philosophy? Indeed, it is, Thalrex responded, his eyes reflecting the soft light of the stage. We believe that living in harmony with our surroundings is key to maintaining balance in all aspects of life. Our music, like our buildings, is an extension of this belief. The performance began with soft, melodious tones that seemed to mimic the natural sounds of Zangser, the whisper of the wind, the ripple of water. The musicians played instruments that were both strange and beautiful to the human eye, crafted from materials that shimmered under the stage lights. This is incredible, Simon whispered, clearly moved by the performance. There's something deeply calming about this music. Linus nodded in agreement. It's almost as if the music is speaking directly to a part of you that you weren't aware existed. Thalrex, is there a particular theme for tonight's performance? The theme tonight revolves around the concept of journey and discovery. It explores the paths we take in life, the discoveries we make about ourselves and others, and how these journeys shape our existence, Thalrex explained. As the performance unfolded, the music intensified, evoking a range of emotions from serenity to a poignant longing. Jason felt a profound connection, not just to the music, but to the moment itself, shared with friends from another world. During the intermission, the group discussed their impressions. You know, Jason started, Back on Earth, music is often linked with historical events or personal memories. Does Zangzarian music serve a similar purpose? Absolutely, Thalrex replied. Many of our compositions are inspired by historical milestones or personal achievements. Each piece tells a story, much like your music. The second half of the performance was even more dynamic, with the introduction of a vocal element. The Zangzarian language, melodic and fluid, added a new layer of complexity and emotion to the music. As the final notes faded into the night, the audience remained silent for a moment, collectively savoring the end of the journey before erupting into applause. That was an enlightening experience, Linus said as they walked out. I think we often underestimate the power of cultural expressions like music in understanding a civilization. Simon nodded, adding, It's not just an understanding, but a deep emotional connection. It makes the differences between us seem smaller. Thalrex smiled. I'm glad you found the experience so valuable. Perhaps tomorrow you could share something of your earth music with us? It would be a delightful exchange. Jason agreed enthusiastically. We'd love to. It's a wonderful way to continue this exchange of ideas and emotions. As they returned to their lodgings under the starry sky, the discussions about music led to broader conversations about art, philosophy, and the shared human and Zangzarian quest for meaning. The night, filled with revelations, had deepened their appreciation for the power of cultural exchange and set the stage for more profound interactions in the days to come. The following morning, the air on Zangser was vibrant with anticipation as Jason and Simon prepared to share a piece of Earth culture with their new friends. They had chosen a selection of Earth music, ranging from classical symphonies to modern jazz, hoping to convey the emotional and historical breadth of human musical expression. In a small auditorium at the university, Thalrex and a group of Zangzarian students gathered, curious about what they were about to experience. Jason started with a brief introduction. Music, as we discussed last night, is a universal language, albeit expressed differently across cultures, Jason explained. Today, we hope to give you a glimpse into our world through some of our most cherished musical pieces. Simon played the first piece, a powerful symphony by Beethoven, 
letting the dramatic swells and delicate descents of the music fill the room. The Zangzarians listened intently, their expressions thoughtful. This piece, Simon said as the last notes faded, captures a range of human emotions from turmoil to triumph. It's often played at significant events to inspire a sense of awe and unity. Thaurex nodded. The depth of emotion is palpable. It's quite different from our music, but very moving. Next, Jason chose a jazz track, explaining the genre's origins in African-American communities and its significance in the cultural tapestry of Earth. As the lively rhythms and improvisational elements of the music played, the audience seemed visibly more relaxed, so even swaying gently with the beat. I can feel the spontaneity in this, one Zangzarian student commented. It's very different from the structured melodies we are used to. Yes, jazz is all about improvisation and personal expression, Jason replied. It reflects the diversity and dynamism of human life. After the presentation, the floor was open for questions, and many Zangzarians were eager to understand more about the connection between human history and music. Linus, who had joined them again, helped field questions, drawing parallels to Zangzarian musical traditions. As the session ended, Thaurex invited Jason and Simon for a walk in University Gardens to reflect on the morning's exchange. I must admit, your music stirs something quite profound, Thaurex said as they walked among luminous, fragrant flowers. It's a stark contrast to the harmony and order of our compositions. Jason smiled. I think that's what makes this exchange so valuable. We get to explore parts of ourselves that might remain undiscovered otherwise. Simon, walking alongside them, added, it's interesting to see how music can bridge worlds, isn't it? Despite our differences, we find common ground in the arts. Thaurex agreed. Indeed, it is quite enlightening. I am beginning to understand that human emotions are both complex and compelling. Your music is a reflection of that. The conversation slowly shifted from music to personal stories. Thaurex shared anecdotes about Zangzarian celebrations where music played a key role while Jason and Simon recounted concerts and performances that had marked significant moments in their lives. As the discussion deepened, the boundaries between teacher and student, human and alien, seemed to blur. They were no longer delegates from distant worlds, but individuals sharing universal experiences. I think today's session has not just been about music, Thalrex finally said as they paused by a shimmering water feature. It's about understanding each other on a level that goes beyond words or even music. It's about the heart. Jason nodded in agreement, feeling a profound sense of connection. Exactly. And it's these moments of understanding that can build lasting peace, more than any treaty. As the sun set over Zangser, casting a warm glow over the gardens, the three of them stood in silent appreciation of the day's lessons, each feeling changed by the exchange of not just music but of souls. The next day brought a slight change in the air, signaling the approach of Zangser's mild seasonal shift. Jason, Simon, and Linus met early, keen to discuss the day's agenda which focused on diplomacy and negotiation, bridging the theoretical with practical applications from human history. As they entered the classroom, they were greeted by Thaurex and a new face, Professor Cowren, a Zangzarian expert in interstellar diplomacy. The human delegates appreciated the opportunity to engage with someone who embodied the practical application of the principles they had been discussing. Good morning, Jason began addressing the room. Today, we shift our focus slightly from the broad strokes of warfare to the fine art of diplomacy. The goal is peace, and the tools are words, treaties, and understanding. Professor Cowan nodded, his expression conveying deep interest. I'm eager to learn from your experiences. Our methods are perhaps more theoretical, given our limited exposure to conflict. Linus took the lead, laying out historical contexts where diplomacy had played crucial roles in preventing or ending conflicts on Earth. Simon then presented a case study on the Cold War, emphasizing the use of diplomacy in avoiding large-scale military confrontations. Cowren listened intently, interjecting occasionally with questions. How do you prepare for negotiations with adversaries, especially when trust is minimal? That's a great question, Simon responded. Preparation involves understanding the adversary's history, motives, and potential pressures. It's about finding common ground, but also recognizing and respecting differences, Jason added. And sometimes, it's about leveraging those differences to create mutually beneficial outcomes. Often, what starts as a negotiation can lead to a deeper understanding and cooperation. The discussion became a lively exchange, with students asking about everything from negotiation tactics to the ethical implications of diplomatic compromises. As the session concluded, 
Thalrex proposed an afternoon walk in a nearby botanical reserve, offering a chance to continue their discussions in a more informal setting. The group eagerly accepted, intrigued by the prospect of learning more about Zangzarian flora and fauna. Walking among exotic plants and the sounds of unseen creatures, the conversation shifted from diplomacy to personal stories of times when understanding and patience had led to unexpected resolutions in each of their lives. Jason shared an anecdote from his military days. There was a time during a peacekeeping mission when both sides were deadlocked, hostile, even. It was a cultural festival that brought us together. We shared food and music, much like we shared our music with you. Those informal moments softened the hard lines and opened doors to formal talks. Cowron was particularly moved by this story. It seems that your people place great value on shared human experiences as a bridge to peace. We Zangzarians could learn a lot from this approach. Simon chuckled, plucking a leaf from a low-hanging branch and examining it. Sometimes it's these simple acts, sharing a meal, a walk in a park, understanding each other's culture, that lay the groundwork for the more complex tasks of diplomacy. The day ended with a group sitting by a small lake, watching the sunset and reflecting on the lessons learned. Thalrex, looking thoughtful, summed up the day's insights. Today was about the heart of diplomacy, the human and Zangzarian elements that go beyond treaties and negotiations. It's about the personal connections that can often lead to lasting peace. Everyone nodded in agreement, feeling a profound connection not only to each other, but to the principles they had discussed. As they walked back to the university, the bonds formed by their shared experiences were palpable, a testament to the power of understanding and empathy in the art of diplomacy. The next day dawned clear and bright on Zangser, the perfect backdrop for what Jason and Simon had planned, a workshop focusing on the practical applications of diplomacy and negotiation through interactive role-playing scenarios. This session, designed to be hands-on, was meant to further immerse the Zangzarian students in the nuances of human diplomatic strategies. In a spacious conference room at the university, Jason and Simon set up different stations, each representing a potential diplomatic scenario. Thalrex and Professor Cowran joined early to help facilitate the workshop, intrigued by this dynamic approach to learning. Good morning, everyone, Jason greeted as the students filed in. Today, we're going to put theory into practice. You'll be participating in role-playing exercises to simulate diplomatic negotiations. Don't worry, it's all about learning through doing. Cowran looked around, his eyes reflecting genuine curiosity. This method is quite new to us. Zangzarian education tends to be more lecture-based. Simon handed out scenario cards to each group of students. Each group will handle a different scenario. You'll need to negotiate a resolution based on the objectives and constraints listed on your cards. Think of it as a puzzle where the pieces are human motivations, cultural backgrounds, and strategic interests. As the exercises commenced, Jason and Simon circulated among the groups, observing and occasionally stepping in to guide the discussions. Thalrex, acting as a mediator in one of the simulations, was deeply engaged, his diplomatic skills coming to the forefront. In one scenario, a group grappled with a trade dispute between two planets over resources. The Zangzarian students, applying both Zangzarian and human principles, debated the merits of various compromise solutions. How do we ensure fairness in distribution without compromising our planet's needs? One student pondered aloud. Kaurin, watching the discussion, suggested, consider what fairness means in the context of each culture. Sometimes, understanding the underlying values can lead to breakthroughs in negotiations. After several rounds of negotiations, the groups presented their solutions. Each scenario revealed different approaches, reflecting the complexity of diplomatic engagements. Jason was impressed with the depth of thought and the ability to integrate human concepts with Zangzarian values. This exercise was enlightening, one student reflected. It showed us the importance of empathy and creativity in diplomacy. As the workshop concluded, Simon gathered feedback from the participants. What did you all think of this approach to learning? Thalrex responded, it was highly interactive and practical. It forced us to think on our feet and consider multiple perspectives simultaneously, which is crucial in real-world diplomacy. Jason nodded, pleased with the outcome. We hope to show that diplomacy is not just about formal agreements. It's about dialogue, understanding, and sometimes quick thinking and flexibility. The group decided to spend the rest of the day relaxing together at a nearby cafe, discussing not just the day's lessons, but also sharing personal stories and insights into their cultures. The informal setting provided a comfortable atmosphere for deeper connections to form. Kaurin, sipping on a local beverage, turned to Jason. Today's workshop has been a revelation. 
The practical aspect of diplomacy could indeed be something we incorporate more fully into our own educational systems. The conversation meandered from educational systems to personal aspirations, weaving a tapestry of shared human and Zangzarian dreams and ambitions. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows over the cafe, everyone agreed that the lessons learned went far beyond diplomatic strategies. They had learned about each other, forging bonds that they hoped would last long after the human delegates returned to Earth. On the final day of the seminar, the air was tinged with a mix of anticipation and nostalgia. Jason, Simon, and Linus gathered their materials and headed to the university for the last time, joined by Thalrex and Professor Cowron. Today's session was meant to be a culmination of all the lessons and shared experiences from the past weeks. In the university's main hall, students and faculty from various departments had gathered, signaling the broader impact of the seminar. Jason took the podium with a calm demeanor, reflecting on the journey they had all embarked on together. Ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here on our final day, I'd like to revisit a phrase we started with. Deathworlders teach alien class about human warfare. However, I believe what we've truly explored is far broader, Jason began, his voice steady and clear. We've delved into the intricacies of human conflict, yes, but more importantly, we've explored how understanding these dark aspects of our history helps us appreciate the strength and necessity of diplomacy and peace, he continued. Simon joined him, adding, what we found here on Zangser was not just an audience eager to learn about another culture's history, but a group of individuals committed to understanding the underlying principles of peace and negotiation. Professor Cowron stepped forward, his tone earnest. Your teachings have not only broadened our understanding of human cultures, but have also provided us with valuable insights into our own approaches to conflict and harmony. We are grateful for the wisdom and perspectives you have shared. The students then presented a collaborative project they had initiated, a virtual library of intercultural strategies for peace, inspired by the seminar. It included case studies, diplomatic strategies, and personal stories from both human and Zangzarian contributors. Linus, visibly moved by the initiative, commented, This is exactly what we hope to inspire, a living, evolving resource that grows from our joint efforts to create a more peaceful universe. As the session drew to a close, Thalrex proposed a continuation of this exchange program, inviting future delegates from Earth and offering to send Zangzarian scholars to human institutions. The bridges we've built here should not end with a seminar. Let's keep these channels open, continue to learn from each other, and together forge a path to a peaceful future, Thalrex suggested, his voice filled with hope. Jason nodded in agreement. We came here under the banner of educators, but we leave as students ourselves, having learned much about your culture and about the universal values that connect us all. The group then moved outside, where the university had arranged a small farewell ceremony. As the Zangzarian sun set, Casting a golden glow over the gathering, the humans and Zangzarians exchanged tokens of appreciation and friendship, books, cultural artifacts, and promises of future visits. Simon, looking around at the faces of both his team and their Zangzarian friends, felt a profound sense of accomplishment and connection. Today isn't just a conclusion of a seminar. It's the beginning of an ongoing dialogue between our worlds. As they said their goodbyes, with promises to return and continue the work they had started, Jason felt a surge of gratitude and wonder. They had come to teach, but in turn, had learned invaluable lessons about diplomacy, friendship, and the power of understanding. The shuttle back to Earth was quiet, each member of the team lost in thought, reflecting on the profound experiences and the new horizons that had opened up, horizons that promised continued collaboration and mutual growth in the years to come.